Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Down goes Chris Matthews. Down goes Chris Matthews. Yes, he is resigned from MSNBC. In fact, he's going to do so here in this next video. I'm retiring. This is the last hardball on MSNBC. And obviously, this isn't for lack of interest in politics. As you can tell, I've loved every minute of my 20 years as host of Hardball. Every morning I read the papers and I'm gung-ho to get to work. Not many people have had this privilege. I love working with my producers and the discussions we have over how to report the news. And I love having this connection with you, the good people who watch. Well, after a conversation with MSNBC, I decided tonight will be my last hardball. So let me tell you why. The younger generations out there are ready to take the reins. We see them in politics, in the media, in fighting for their causes. They are improving the workplace. We're talking here about better standards than we grew up with, fair standards. A lot of it has to do with how we talk to each other. Compliments on a woman's appearance that some men, including me, might have once incorrectly thought were okay. We're never okay. Not then and certainly not today. And for making such comments in the past, I'm sorry. All right, so... That's Chris Matthews. Uh, now, afterwards, by the way, and this is interesting. He didn't come back after that. That was the opening of his show. And then he comes back, or it comes back to, uh, what is it? Steve Kornacki, who was then hosting with a pretty shocked look on his face. So, there you go. Uh, now, after this happened, uh, women's rights groups are cheering this. Uh, because apparently uh, Mr. Matthews has had a bit of an issue with women, uh, specifically sexual harassment. Uh, this actually comes up through, uh, three days after DQ columnist Laura Bassett accused Matthews of demeaning and objectifying her and other women guests during segments as well as behind the scenes. Uh, now, Chris Matthews has had a very long career. He's been on MSNBC for 20 years. And there are some uncomfortable moments with female guests uh, on his show, including uh, this with Aaron Burnett. Can you get a little closer to the camera? My, what is it? Is it come in closer. No, coming, coming further. Coming closer. Really close. What, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You look great. Anyway, it's thanks. Aaron, it's great to have look at that look. You're great. I don't even know. I'm going to have to go look at the face here. I'm no, you're beautiful. Location. Thank you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're a knockout. Anyway, thank you, Aaron Burnett. All right. It's all right getting bad news from you even, okay? Thanks for coming on Hardball. Up next. Oh, that's cringe. Total cringe. She's like, she's like, wait, what? No, Is there something? somebody in my shot? No, he just wanted you to get closer to the camera so we could look at you. I mean, that's. Look, that's super creepy, right? Uh, and there are a lot of people who have similar stories to that. Uh, one of those women is, uh, as I mentioned, Laura Bassett. So now she wrote this. In 2017, I wrote a personal essay about a much older married cable news host who inappropriately flirted with me in the makeup room a few times before he we went live on a show, making me incredibly uncomfortable on the air. I was afraid to name him at the time for fear of retaliation from the network. I'm not anymore. It was Chris Matthews. So uh, now let me give you an example here uh, of one of the uh, interactions that Miss uh, Bassett had with uh, Chris Matthews. Now in 2016, she writes, right before I had to go on a show and talk about the sexual assault allegations against Donald Trump, a little interesting context, uh, Matthews looked over at me in the makeup chair next to him and said, why haven't I fallen in love with you yet? Creepy. Creepy, unnecessary. Wow. Uh, now, Julie uh, Milliken, uh, vice president at Media Matters for America, points out that MSNBC is, should have been ashamed uh, to have propped up this man for so long. And they have a quite a history, quite a record of Chris Matthews doing similar things. In fact, uh, Milliken says, he has a decades-long history of misogyny on and off the air and even openly bragged about whether women measured up to his Chris Matthews test of women's attractiveness. He has his own test. Wow. 
Uh, despite all of this, Milliken added, MSNBC continued to give Matthews a powerful platform on the network, making him a feature of their political commentary and a staple of their election coverage. And by the way, there was um, uh, other statements that Chris Matthews made against Bernie Sanders, which was finally enough to get him removed from election coverage, but not the stuff against women. So I just want to point that out as well. Um, now, she says, no matter how the decision was made for Matthews to exit, the fact remains that MSNBC turned a blind hide to his sexist, misogynistic, and offensive behavior for years. Shauna Thomas, co-founder and executive director of Ultraviolet, said in a statement that Matthews' departure is, quote, what needed to happen. For decades, Matthews has used his position to harass women with sexist and predatory comments while undermining women serving in public office. From his history of sexual misconduct, his refusal to believe and support survivors, and his egregious sexist behavior, Matthews had no business being on television for as long as he has been. That was true before Laura Bassett courageously came out to share a story, and it remains true to this day. Now for Bassett, she added that, quote, All I gotta say is, it's about time. And then adds, no, I have actually more to say than that. Since calling out Matthews this week has been really tough, the harassment has been invasive, cruel, and personal, and it's all worth it if he will never have the platform to demean and objectify us again. Now, understand, people who are uh, fans of Chris Matthews are not, and, and, and the reason I'm talking about this, or that I bring up this point, right, is that, uh, you know, online, the establishment is saying, oh my God, these toxic, misogynistic Bernie bros. They are literally the worst people on the internet, right? And look at how they attack women who disagree with them. Well, now, wait a minute. The people who are attacking Laura Bassett aren't Bernie Sanders supporters. These are people, uh, Bernie Sanders, look, Chris Matthews does not like Bernie Sanders. It has been very clear in a lot of the videos that we have gone uh, and, and talked about before. So who are fans of Chris Matthews that are going out and attacking Bassett for accusing Chris Matthews? These are establishment liberals. These are the people that agree with Chris Matthews. So, so understand that, right? They want to call Bernie Sanders supporters, the, oh, the worst people on the internet. The sex is misogynistic. They, they hate women. They're all white bros, hate women. Okay, well, who are the people attacking Bassett? Because it's certainly not Bernie Sanders supporters. Yeah, they're not going to talk about that. Of course not. Of course not. Uh, so, look, I mentioned earlier, it's not the only controversy uh, involving Matthews. Uh, you also had the backlash. Uh, we covered that in the show. When he compared Senator Bernie Sanders' victory in Nevada to the Nazi invasion of France. Yeah. So, uh, and not only that, but he's talked about in very negative terms about Bernie Sanders, about uh, socialism in Denmark and, and all that stuff. Uh, and even remarked that he didn't know if Bernie Sanders would cheer if the, if the Reds, right, uh, had, you know, took, uh, taken people into Central Park to be executed. I don't know if Bernie Sanders would cheer about that. That is so ridiculously over the top. Insanity. Insanity. I will not miss this guy being on the air. Uh, I think it should have happened. Uh, he should have been let go a long time ago. And understand, this wasn't him resigning. Uh, I mean, I think what happened is that this was too much heat for Chris Matthews. And he had a little talk with the people upstairs. And they were like, hey, look, uh, either you resign or we push you out. Understand, that's exactly what happened. So now there, look, there are people that are feeling bad for Chris Matthews right now, by the way, like, oh my God, what, whatever is he going to do? He loves politics and understand that, that that is one of the things a lot of people point out like, well, he was so passionate about it and he's not like the, you know, Wolf Blitzer and he actually was excited about this stuff. Yeah. But understand his actions were unforgivable. Uh, and so, I mean, and, and absolutely egregious, this guy should not have been on the air. But if you're feeling bad about him not having his job anymore, remember, this man is worth millions of dollars. 
He has made millions of dollars and he gets to retire. I don't think I'll ever get to retire. I don't think a lot of you who are watching are going to get to retire. So in the end of the day, I think Chris Matthews is going to be 100% fine. He's taking time out to, to write some books. So write a couple of books, MSNBC or, or people uh, related to it will push those books and he'll get millions of more dollars. And so he's going to be fine. But as far as the women that uh, Matthews had harassed, well, that, that's a different story. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.